Hello, good evening and welcome back once again to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral. My name is Ross Briley and we're here again on Friday night to have a look ahead to Saturday afternoon's Red Hot Racing Action. We're going to be going through the, uh, the TV races, seven races for you to get stuck into tomorrow at Newmarket and York. And although plenty of Jumps fans have already switched over to Chepstow, uh, the next few weekends uh, for flat fans are fantastic as well. And we're going to be crowning some juveniles and sorting out some tricky handicaps as well. Plenty of questions to answer, of course. Uh, can Charlie Appleby continue his juvenile domination? He's got three horses who are very short price favourites uh, for the, uh, the group races tomorrow. Can Willie Mullins continue his Cesarowicz record? He's won the last three and he's got five runners in tomorrow's race <laughs> as well. And will any of our pundits be tipping Mondemege? That is the question you come every single week to find out. Uh, but we've got plenty of answers uh, for those questions and more coming up. Of course, this is live and interactive, so do get in touch uh, with your comments down the side of that YouTube uh, panel. We've got the chat uh, box right in front of me. Like and subscribe uh, to the stream as well. And don't forget, as I say every week, please gamble responsibly. We're here to advise and bet what you can afford. Uh, we've got some Good races to get stuck into and hopefully some good winners. Plenty of short price favourites in those juvenile races, so hopefully we can find some value. I am joined uh, in the studio once again by Graham Rodway, who is in the studio, then back home again, then back in here. He's looking at French racing, he's looking at jumps racing, he's got Newmarket, he's got York. You are a jack of all trades, Mr Rodway. <laughs> yeah, and a master of none, most people <laughs> would say, Ross, but... Um... Yeah, no, we're back for another uh, cracking weekend of racing, isn't it? I start, seem to say this every week, but, yeah. but you know, there's something for everything, for everyone this week. Yeah. You've got flat, jumps, everything. Two-year-olds, three-year-olds, hurdlers, stairs, whatever you like. Absolutely. Some uh, Chelmsford action, if you Chelmsford, like. Love Chelmsford, yeah. Yeah, why not? Um, yes, you, uh, you, you, you're a jack-of-all-trades, a master of uh, back in seconds, from what you were telling me outside. Oh, yeah, very frustrating run at the moment, yeah. Uh, but um, hopefully it changes soon. Yeah. Uh, Newmarket and York uh, in your pantheon of, of favourite tracks? Well, Newmarket is very easy for me to get to because I'm just down the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I quite like it to go to. We could have done it live from the track, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about punting. Uh, yeah, I, I do all right, I think. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't actually keep records of that. Should, shouldn't I? Which tracks are my best ones and which ones aren't? But oh. Then you could overthink it massively, couldn't you? I won't bet too much here because I don't win there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Or, or you think, oh, I've just got a cracking you... record at this track. It turns out you're back one winner at 50 to 1 over the first five years. It just gives you another reason to overthink everything, which is just what we need. Yes, exactly, yeah. Uh, overthinking in race analysis, I, I refuse to believe it. Um, I was going to say one man who, uh, who doesn't overthink, but that implies that he underthinks, uh, would, be, uh, would be Tom Siegel, who every time we throw him a question about the draw, about the track, about the bias, he sets back the fastest horse. Uh, Tom, nice to have you back. You were, uh, you were away for, uh, for France. Uh, you weren't uh, uh, in Paris, unfortunately. You were at home in bed, by the sounds of things. Yeah, I'm not sure which was worse, to be honest. I think <laughs> I might have preferred being in bed, judging by the rain in Paris. But uh, no, nice to be back. Looking forward to a, to a great day's racing. Uh, I think it's a cracking day, isn't it? At Newmarket, especially. Uh, luckily, I think, you know, the ground doesn't look too bad there, did it? Uh, we've spent so much time uh, doing these things in the past, saying the ground's hit this, that we don't know what the ground is going to be. I think it's going to be good ground tomorrow at Newmarket and uh, hopefully the best horse and fastest horses will win. Yeah, and uh, of course we've, uh, we've got plenty of sprints at York for you as well, Tom. Just what you ordered. Oh, yeah, love them. Can't wait for them. Mondemage, you, I, I, I hadn't heard that name for three weeks and you had to mention it again, didn't you? Oh my yeah. God. I've tried, I've tried to suggest to my partner that if we do have a kid, we call him Mondemage, but uh, she's yeah. not listening. She's not, she's not going for it. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Graham and Tom providing the, uh, the tips. Uh, one man who was in, uh, in Paris last week was, uh, was David Stevens, uh, but uh, uh, he's, uh, he's managed to find his way home. And, uh, and David, I'm sure you've got uh, plenty of uh, top-class price boosts up your sleeve, uh, hopefully a few winners as well. Good evening, gents. Yeah, great to be here. Tom, despite what you might think, Paris last weekend was absolutely fantastic. If the racing wasn't up to scratch, then the food and wine was, was particularly good. So you don't know what you're missing there, Tom. Give it a go. But yeah, looking forward to this day. Obviously, the Coral sponsored card up at York. Group one action and the big staying handicap at Newmarket. Something for everyone. And well, I'll leave it to the viewers to decide the quality of the price boost throughout the evening. 
Oh, I think you'll find... Well, it's normally Tom who uh, decides how to call the prize boost. Uh, and Graham, you did a great job of stepping into those uh, those shoes last week. I tried my best, yeah. yeah. More so on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah than Friday. I thought that Keith did a good job on Friday. We we alternated positions. He was at home and then, and then we alternated positions in, yeah, slagging off the prize boost as well, which... Um, but it was great to hear the way that um, David just ex just explained how much of a great time he had in Paris yeah. by basically saying that he really enjoyed the food and wine. Yeah. I think that explains the whole weekend. I yeah. think, yeah. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. Yes, yeah, Paris I've been to, and Paris is fun. It's just the racing that spoilt it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although if you have enough wine, um, then I'm sure the racing looks fantastic, doesn't it? From uh, from where you are. And look, Saturday was really good, wasn't it? I really enjoyed Saturday. Dubai Honor, I thought was exceptional. It's just mm. such a shame when they get that. Uh, and it wasn't too bad. It wasn't bottomless. It was just it just was it looked a bit messy, doesn't it? The mm. art people say is the best race in the world. Uh, it just sometimes it doesn't look that way, and that that was all aesthetically. It wasn't. That, that appealing, but Saturday was really good. Mm, yeah, uh, although we had, I mean, we've got, um, we're going to get stuck into uh, to the uh, the racing very shortly. Um, in fact, we'll uh, we'll get the uh, the prices up for the uh, the first race tomorrow, the one forty five, the uh, the Zetland Stakes, because um, of course uh, the, what Paris did uh, do a little bit, Tom, which I know you are a, a big fan of the juvenile form as uh, as I am. And uh, one of my favourite things is getting to this time of year and starting to get those those questions and those uh, that hierarchy sorted out about the two year olds. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I thought today's one uh, was the standout, the standout two-year-old I've seen so far. I thought she was really, really impressive again. Inspiring. In spiral. Yep. Yeah, I thought she was really good. I think the problem with uh, Saturday's or last weekend stuff was once again the ground. I mean, I, Angel Blur, as much as I like him as a horse, don't think he's going to be winning any guineas. No. Not unless it's heavy ground. I, I, I don't think he's got any chance whatsoever. I wouldn't back him at 333 yeah. to one or whatever, and not let alone the... 33 to 1 or whatever he was after the race. Uh, where, where do you stand, Tom, by the way? Just as, as people are saying, I mean, should every... We can't run every race, can we, on on no. good ground? So it, no. Does it... no, it's absolutely fine. I don't mind soft ground racing. I, what I find difficult is when it rains sort of when you, you know, just before the racing. You know what I mean? I thought, mm. I, as, as Andre Farber is right, I think soft ground horses have every right to be, you know, you know, rated as highly as any other horse. Why shouldn't they be? I mean, it's just a set of conditions. I just find it just, it's just difficult as a punter, as a tipster and as a analyst to really know what to make of it, Head, you know, during, before and after the races. I mean, that will all come out in the fullness of time and maybe the German horse is, is a superstar. I mean, he beat all the right horses, didn't he? It's just at the time you sit there and you're sort of scratching your head a bit about, you know, because whatever you say, I know there are people out there who, who gave him a good chance and whatever, but uh, he couldn't make a case through form. I mean, he was one of the bottom races in the race, wasn't he? But uh, there we go. That's what happens. That's what happens when uh, in, in the rate in uh, when it buckets down, you know, 25 millimetres on the day of the race. Things Strange things happen. Yeah, the good news is uh, Torquedo Tasso will be back uh, in theory next year to defend his uh, his crown. So if he goes and wins the arc again uh, by a couple of lengths next season, then, um, you know, we could have a superstar on our hands, but uh, but that's the uh, the joy of it. Questions, just as many questions answered as they are posed every single time we have a, a group race uh, in racing. So let's get to uh, to tomorrow. Then, like I said, we've got Newmarket and York seven races uh, on the card. Get your uh, your selections and your bets uh, on through that uh, that chat box. Tom Williams already uh, excited about uh, Carabas uh, later on on the card. But we start off in the uh, the Zetland Stakes, uh, the Godolphin Flying Start Zetland Stakes, and that is crucial, uh, of course, because they have. Uh, a favourite here in the shape of uh, Harfit at seven to four, unconquerable seven to two with Bluegrass. They also have Goldspur at four to one, and then it's eleven to one Berkshire Rebel, twenty-two to one Dukebox, and thirty-three to one Bar. Those uh, again, Charlie Appleby's uh, had a uh, a right old time with his uh, with his juveniles and his three-year-olds, and I mean, uh, part of me is thinking, oh, it's, it's good to see Godolphin back. I mean, they've got bottomless pockets and some of the best bred horses around. They should be winning these races every year, shouldn't they? <laughs> Yeah, they should be right there, and they and they are now, aren't they? Charlie Appleby mainly being the man who saddles most of their winners, and um, he saddles half it here, doesn't he? The favourite, and is he Goldspur as well? I think he trains that too. So uh, half it won nicely first time out, beat uh, Razzle Dazzle, was it? A, a horse that I quite like um, at Noon. Uh, that went on to win well at Newmarket, but then was beaten at Donny next time out. I was a bit disappointed with that, and then half it was beaten also at Haydock. Now, behind triple time, and like Dave Orton's absolutely convinced that um, triple time is very smart. He's spoken to Kevin Ryan, he, they, they like triple time, but as I always say to everyone, 
you know, all trainers like their own horses, don't they? They yeah. all think that they've got a very good one when it wins, of course. Um, I just think he's short in the market here, Ross. What do you think? Uh, I mean, again, it's it's a lot of it is he's running to a good horse, obviously last time out. Um, well, it's hard. Kevin Ryan likes him. Yeah, Kevin Ryan, yeah, Kevin Ryan definitely <laughs> likes it. I think he ran into a good horse. Uh, I, I think he's short enough. I don't think it's a particularly strong race. Um, uh, that's that's the problem. A lot of these are, are, are exposed. So he's the one who is unexposed. Um, in theory, you get a nice horse come out of this as well. So uh, he's uh, he's nicely bred. Of course, um, the uh, uh, the dam uh, uh, cushion was a decent a decent horse from a, a decent family from the Roxburgh. Don't remember cushion. I do remember Bluegrass's dam. Quiet reflection. Yeah. She was very good. We've got some very good dams in here. Pomology won the uh, the Lancashire Oaks and was placed in the uh, the Vermeil. So it's um, on breeding. It's really good. And a few decent horses have run in this race over the past few years. We've had Subjectivist, Q Gardens, DXB, Mystery Angel. Lots of really nice horses. Lone Eagle won it last year mm. as well. So a lot of sort of slow horses. <laughs> good slow horses. Good slow horses. Yeah. Middle yeah. distance to stayers. Yeah. This is what we're looking at. So so you're unconvinced about half it. Yeah, I think Bluegrass. I would probably back if, okay. um, you know, if, if also, I mean, uh, I mean he's, not bred to, he's not bred to be a slow horse, is he? No, quite reflecting is his dam, but uh, whatever you believe about what Aidan O'Brien says, oh, you know, Galileo's get forever. I don't know whether that's true or not, it's probably nonsense, but Bluegrass looks like he's going to stay this trip, for sure. He stayed on well last time over a mile. Aidan O'Brien's won this race before, as in Kew Gardens, of course, you mentioned. Mm-hmm. I just thought that Bluegrass was the most likely winner, but it's, it's, it's not a race I like. Yeah, the uh, the R do have a very good record in this. Uh, Bluegrass is uh, seven or two shot. Um, talk to us about the Appleby horses. Uh, talk to us about the Irish Raiders. Tom, which side were you falling on? Don't know, but I'm a bit worried that Graham thinks that uh, Lone Eagle, Coronet, Kew Gardens, and Hartnell were slow horses. But I hope he doesn't think that Monda Medge is better than that lot. Uh, it's all I relative, thought, isn't it? It's all relative. I I, 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 mean, I I love the race. I like races. I like staying races for two year olds. Always have done. Uh, I think half it is the one to beat. I'm in the Kevin Ryan camp. I think triple time's a nice horse. I think I think the way the race went, he missed the break that day and had to sort of rush around the outside. I know it was the day at Haydock where everything led from the front, but I like the way half it kept at it, kept kept battling away. I think the trip will be fine. I know there's been a bit of money around for Bluegrass uh, on form. He's got plenty to find. Uh, now, obviously, he's an Aidan O'Brien horse that was by Galileo, so he could make a massive step forward, but... I don't know. I prefer the form of half it, and I thought unconquerable Unconquer- was the danger who ran in the uh, the race, the good race the other day. Was it the Caribus race and the Royal Lodge Lodge race? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I thought I thought that's he's actually got the best form. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether he'll stay being by church, I think he probably will. I don't think Joseph O'Brien will be coming. But he'd be my selection. There's he'd a lot of selection. lot of stamina on the uh, the dam side. Uh, the, dam. the dam was placed over two miles, and it's from a uh, a uh, Ballymacall stud family, of course, all Correct. tend to stay well. Correct. And so he's uh, obviously run against Point, Lo- Point Lonsdale the time before. He's bumped into Royal Patronage and Caribus last time. I think he's got the best form. So he'd be my choice. Uh, I am scared of half it because uh, I think Charlie Appleby, as we've pointed out, he's the Newcastle United of uh, of horse racing these days, isn't he? Or is that the wrong way around? Is Newcastle the Knights United the Godolphin of, of football these days? But whatever, whatever. You're going to have to explain that one. <laughs> well, Newcastle United are now th- worth thirty million oh, pounds. Now, yeah. Thirty billion, aren't they? After yeah. their new takeover, they're yeah. the richest club in the world, and it's not even close. I thought you meant through uh, through success, <laughs> which no. case no. definitely getting through, things through money. Up. Through money, so so uh, uh, yeah, I think half it's the one to be, but I'd go for Unconquerable. I think he's got the best form. Mm. Yeah, Unconquerable. I thought it was interesting. He was the only horse in that Royal Lodge to make up any any ground to improve his position at all. He was held up last. He came. He ran on for third and. Obviously, uh, it's pretty good form, isn't it? And not bad form behind Point Lonsdale as well. So he's very interesting. Should stay all day. So very top-heavy market here, uh, David, for the uh, for the uh, the Zetland Stakes. Uh, half it seven to four. Goldspurs uh, been a bit weak in the market. I think. Uh, talk to us where the uh, where the money's been going since the market opened. Yeah, the money really has come for the two Irish runners there. Uh, two very different profiles, of course. Bluegrass lightly raced, just the one run. At the current and unconquerable, been kept busy all season. I say that third in the Royal Lodge that Tom has spoken about looks pretty decent. I just, again, at the prices, I'd probably stick with the other Godolphin runner. He was an impressive winner at Sandown as he needs to step up here. Uh, half it, I'm in the, the triple time is a decent horse camp. So, uh, Graham, you're on your own on that one, I think, on this. Um, 
so yeah, look, you can forgive half it running into that one. There, he's a worthy favourite, seven to four. But trappy little race to start. So we'll go with our first price boost of the night, and it focuses on the two Charlie Appleby runners, or are they the Newcastle United runners? I wasn't quite sure where Tom was going with that one, but <laughs> you can back both of them. It was eight to eleven. You can back them both at even money. So if you want the Godolphin pair, Charlie Appleby in flying form, even money, the first pair. And I should just say we're also beaten by a length on all the. ITV races tomorrow, and in fact, the entire York card, I should say. So if your selection is beaten by up to a length, you'll get a free bet back up to a tenner. That's on all York races and the new market races on ITV. Lovely stuff. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, what wins Zetland, Graham Rodway? Bluegrass for me. Bluegrass it is. Uh, Tom? Uh, unconquerable. OK, I'll go with unconquerable as well. He uh, will be more, all my filthy each ways tomorrow. Uh, David Stevens. I might as well be different and say Goldspur. Goldspur it is, who hacked up on debut at Sandown uh, by uh, eight lengths. Very similar to, uh, to one ruler, of course, who, uh, who won this last year. Uh, speaking of beaten by length, we're over to York for the next, the 202 uh, uh, to, uh, to York, which uh, leaves from King's Cross, uh, I think. Uh, Ever Given, 4-1. to one. Canonize, 5-1. to one. Witch Hunter, 6-1. to one. Gisborne at 6-1. to one. Uh, Alatea AB is 13 to 2. Hello, my darling, 8 to 1. Pocket Rocket, 12 to 1. And La Hague at 12 to 1. Here, uh, far this uh, juvenile listed race, 14 of them going to post. Soft ground, of course, uh, at York, and it looks proper soft at uh, York ground. Uh, not many horses making too much ground up uh, today. Uh, and interesting to see that this race tends to go to a really exposed runner. I think the average. Uh, runs apart from Mashir, who won this back in 2013. Average runs for a winner of this is about six, with Nastase was the most exposed runner in, uh, last year. Abarama Gold, Vintage Brute, uh, Sir Dancelot, Don Juan Triumphant won this a few years ago. Uh, plenty of horses who'd had tough old seasons and came to this uh, in uh, in rock solid form. And that goes for the first two in the betting here. Ever Given, four to one, uh, who won a big race here, uh, and uh, and canonised at five to one, who could have won a big race. Uh, runner up in the Mary Gate, six to one. Witch Hunter and Gisborne, Alatea AB, thirteen to two. Hello, my darling, eight to one with Pocket Rocket and La Hague. Uh, bigger prices. The rest here, Tom. Every time we uh, preview York races, we say uh, York form is absolutely crucial, and the front two in the market have it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ever Given's rock solid, isn't he? I think the uh, Arrow form from Doncaster is very, very decent. Uh, the three principles were miles clear that day. I think he's the one to beat. The only thing I've got against him, stall 12. Now, I'm not a draw man at all, but I did watch the six furlong handicap at, uh, uh, at York earlier today. And it seems to me that those drawn high were miles behind. Now, that can change very, very quickly. And we all know that they'll all probably switch into the middle. I wouldn't be, I was choosing it. it certainly wouldn't be to at 12, I would be choosing. So he, that's, that's the only negative I've got against him. I thought the two Hannon horses were very interesting. I know they don't fit the profile of horses that have had uh, tough seasons, but Gisburn started 6-1 to one for the Coventry, and obviously that wasn't his form. If you go back to his maiden win, which was a really good time, he won by six, seven lengths at Newbury. Form isn't brilliant, but it's not bad. The time suggests to me that he's well up to win in a listed race. So he was my first choice, but I see all the money's coming for Witch Hunter, which is the Hannon other runner who was very unlucky in Salisbury last time not to win a good little race won by Ribby uh, of Marcus Tregonings. Uh, those would be my two, but I understand, I totally get the ever given line. Canonized had slightly concerned about the ground. I didn't think she desperately was at her best in soft ground the previous time she tried it, but she's very solid too. And we all know how Good a record, what a brilliant record William Haggis has mm. around York. So I think the market is right. I'm personally going to go for the Hannon pair. I've, I've, I'm going to have, a, I'm going to have a few good on both. Actually, I think uh, Witch Hunter and Gisburn would be my two. Okay, six to one the pair then. Yeah, a little bit surprised that Gisburn. Yeah, six to one for the uh, six to one for the Coventry, and he's six to one here. Uh, hasn't been seen since, and uh, and this is obviously a, a significantly weaker race. But it is an open race. Other so horses have uh, course form as well. Hello, my darling, and Pocket Rocket both placed in. Uh, a decent nursery here earlier in the season. It's not that much of a step up from a top-class nursery to a, a listed contest. So it looks open. I, I, I get the feeling sometimes, uh, Graham, with, with juvenile races, uh, I get quite excited about them. Some people, uh, where do you where do you stand with the two-year-olds? Uh, yeah, I don't I don't really bet in two-year-old races much, uh, Ross, which is obviously a bit of a problem when it's Dubai Future Champions weekend. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a bunch of two-year-old races year, on the though. card. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think Ever Given's the most likely winner. Interesting with the the stalls and the and the where they might go and like 
Tom was right. In the, in the sprint, the, the high numbers were, were all over the shop. But in the last race, they come right up the stand side. Now, it wasn't a sprint, of course. It was a, a round course race, I think. But uh, they, you know, something come right up the stands row. And uh, it hits me sometimes these jockeys, they change depending on where they think the better ground is, whether they think one side's churned up earlier. You just don't know. It's probably overthinking it again. So I think Evergiven will probably win. He's just rock solid, like Tom said. I mean, that run against Harrow's top class, the York uh, run over the course was a really good time. I think he's hard to knock out the frame for sure. Yeah, he's, I mean, his rating at 97 is 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 earned, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. It's, it's not earned on one kind of one piece of form where you think if if you run to that one piece of form you're in. Pretty much his last sort of three well, or four. Every time I see him, I think, oh, he's tough. Yeah. And then I think, oh, he won't be up to this. And then he, he almost wins at Doncaster. And you just every time you think, oh, is he not going to be good enough for this race? He seems to be able to step up and make it, make the grade. So I just think he might be able to do it again. Okay. Uh, Ever given is a four to one shot uh, here uh, for a wide open juvenile race. Uh, David, uh, uh, again, tell us where the, the money's going. Uh, how many places have we got on any prize boost? What a, what have you got on this, uh, uh, this beaten by a length uh, listed race for us? Well, I can give you an extra place each way. So we can go okay. four places each way in this one. Ever Given's a, a solid favourite now, four to one from five to one this afternoon. He's been kept busy, as you've said, and that should suit him looking at the stats for this race. Um, I fancy with the four places, Pocket Rocket was a little bit bigger earlier on. He's now into 12 to one. Lost a shoe last time here at York. So just hope that he can uh, improve a little bit. Although Tom's not obviously done my confidence the world a good saying about the high draw he's drawn in 14 pocket rocket so I'm, I'm going to take the view that Tom normally takes that the draw is largely irrelevant okay uh, that's uh, yeah we'll check the uh, the draw is uh, largely irrelevant sorry I'm just, uh, just checking uh, technical uh, things there. I thought David will surely speak for another 20 seconds but uh, but no uh, I'm, uh, I'm assuming the uh, my microphone is uh, is working uh, working correctly maybe I should stop leaning forward maybe I should talk into it we should talk into the microphone. That would help. Uh, okay, so a wide open uh, listed race then. Tom, what wins this uh, two o two? I'm going to uh, split stakes on the two Hannon horses, uh, Witch Hunter and Gisborne. Okay, Witch Hunter and Gisborne. Graham, uh, I'm with Ever Given. Ever Given, it is for the for the Dascom team. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Ever Given has a a huge chance. Although I will, we didn't really mention Hello, My Darling much, but the second to Flotus reads well. The uh, uh, you know, the third to Atomic Force uh, in the wrong part of the track last time out. Uh, third to Flaming Rebels course form. Wouldn't surprise me to see uh, her run into a place, uh, but Ever Given should take all the beating. Uh, and, uh, and David? A pocket rocket each way for me. Pocket rocket it is for the 202 at York then. Coral beaten by a length listed race there as we go over to Newmarket. And once again, we have another uh, Godolphin runner at the top of the betting here for the Autumn Stakes. Uh, group 3 contest here uh, over the mile and an odds-on favourite uh, in the shape of Carabas. Uh, at 8 to 11, Imperial Fighter uh, is in at 6 to 1, Dubai Poets 7 to 1, United Nations 8s, Scriptwriter 12s, uh, Takara Bay doesn't go and it is 20 to 1 and bigger the rest. And this uh, son of Dubawi from a, a beautiful uh, family who uh, Godolphin have done very well with over the, uh, the years. The Dan won the oh so sharp and uh, Caribus really should be unbeaten. It was a, an absolutely remarkable run last time out. Um, Graham, I don't think I've ever seen a horse uh, get beat in the way that he has. I, I, I'm abs I have to watch it back two or three times to see. I don't understand how you, how you managed <laughs> no, to catch it. No, like a furlong out, I thought we were seeing the second coming. I thought we were seeing so <laughs> amazing. I was hailing this as the next big thing. This was going to win the guineas. And then at the line, I'm like, oh, how he managed to get beat there? I didn't really like that, to be honest. The, the, the way, you know, when you see all shoot clear like that, how do you end up losing the race from there? I mean, se sectionally speaking, if that's a if that's a word, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it seems that William Buick basically pushed the button way too early and and, and burned through all the gas. Um, it, 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 it looked that way, didn't yeah. it? But you would have thought that he would still have the class to get over the line in front, and he didn't. And, of course, he got outstayed, but... Um, it's just a bit of a red flag for me, a very short price, that he didn't get a home last time. Yeah. I would like to see him finish off a bit stronger than that. Yeah, and he's on a much softer ground, of course, uh, tomorrow. Mm. So. Uh, so you're taking a short price about him, um, but if you don't fancy him, then this, this race is blown completely wide open. It is, yeah, and um, it's a difficult race. Again, a bunch of two-year-olds, any of them could improve. Um, Imperial Fighter, I thought, was the most likely to beat him. Of course, now he's got a bit to find with him through Royal Patronage, of course. But I think the difference might be the Imperial Fighter's going up in trip, going up furlong in trip. I think that will really suit him. Seven furlongs at York fairly fast. 
I think the extra furlong will, will play to Imperial Fighter's strengths. Now, it, it might just be that this time they time it right for Karibus and he blows them all away. But it might just be that maybe he's not, you know, maybe, I don't want to say he's got a hole in him, but maybe he's not, he doesn't finish his races as strongly as you think he's going to. We'll see. Um, I just would rather back Imperial Fighter at the prices. Okay, yeah, Imperial Fighter again. There's, there's a few races tomorrow where you're thinking, uh, he's kind of one of the horses I was thinking, I can't really see him out of the frame. You can pocket two, three, four of them up in each ways, and you think they're definitely going to run their race in the conditions. Mm. Um, of course, uh, and that, uh, that form at uh, York looks very good with not only Royal Patronage, but also Noble Truth in behind. Uh, but uh, what was your opinion on the defeat of the year, the favourite last time out, Tom? Um, was it a sign of a, a raw horse with, who used his talent at the wrong time, or is, uh, is there concern for Caribus? I have no idea, truth be told, Tom. <laughs> Fair Ross, enough. The only thing I would say is that after the race, Charlie Appleby said, didn't he? He said uh, him and Native Trail stand out, and he always felt Caribus had a little bit more class than Native Trail. Well, if that's the case, then we'll win this, that's for sure. Uh, as Graham quite eruditely pointed out, you've got to be concerned about the way he folded there. In the, in the last furlong. But he is a, it was only his, ever his second run. It was Newmarket. He was on his own out front. I think he'll probably be far too good for these. I think the dangers do by poet myself. Mm. I was really impressed with him at uh, Newbury last time. I was impressed with him the first time at Newbury as well, where he sort of was a big eye catcher staying on. Last time he won very easily. And once again, it's a bit like uh, the horse we were talking about earlier, Gisburn. It, it wasn't a great race at Newbury, but the time was really good. It was a good, good time performance. Uh, I know he's been working very well because our Gallops man keeps in the paper keeps writing about Dubai Poet working well. And I think he's, he's, he's probably got a better chance than his odds would suggest. I think 7-1 to one, there's a very decent each way bet, but I do think Caribus will win. OK, Dubai Poet then uh, is a 7-1 to one shot here. An alternative for Roger Varian against the uh, Godolphin-owned uh, favourite. They've won uh, the, uh, the last five uh, runnings of this race uh, with, uh, with three different trainers. Uh, and of course, they've only got one representative. Uh, Thirteen uh, Bally Doyle runners, uh, eight of them placed, yet to uh, to win it in the last ten years. Uh, but Aidan O'Brien throws plenty at it uh, here with the United Nations, uh, with the script writer uh, Acal. Uh, so uh, we've got a short price favourite here, and uh, he looks like he's been well backed. I'm pretty sure he's around the even mark, even money mark when the uh, the market opened. David. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, been very, very well backed into eight to eleven. So punters expecting Godolphin's brilliant run with their juveniles to continue. And that's a, quite a scary thought, actually, if Charlie Appleby has compared him favourably with Native Trail. So, yeah, as you say, he should win this one and, and justify those cramped odds. But first bit of agreement for the night for me and Tom, because I'm with uh, Dubai Poets as well. And we could get a little earlier boost of his Newbury win. Ala Taby for the Chrisfords runs uh, earlier in the Rockingham up at York that we've already had a look at. Uh, I just think at the prices, yeah, look, <laughs> he's being back now. Caribus, I, he certainly, he's not for me at this sort of price, but I say each way on something like Dubai Poet. And United Nations, I suppose, for Aiden is a bit like Bluegrass earlier on. Has only had the one run. Could be anything, son of Galileo. Obviously, he's been landed with quite a, quite a decent sounding name. So, again, he's obviously showed a little bit at home, this one. But, um, yeah, the form, Caribus, he has the edge over Imperial Fighter through on a line through Royal Patronage that Graham referred to there. But 8 to 11, too short for me. I'll go for Dubai Poet. Do you, uh, so, so the, uh, there's a, I assume there is a Bally Doyle list of, uh, of names. Do you think they break it down into divisions then? <laughs> I just think when you look at, I mean, look, they're all given, and a lot of thought goes into all these, I think, but when, but when one is saddled with a name quite as grand as United Nations, yeah. they're not, I mean, I, I just, yeah, I, it just, it caught my eye. Of course, you never back a horse because of the name, but, but well, I would, but uh, I just, yeah, I thought, I thought it was an interesting name for this son of Galileo to be saddled with. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, um, it's. I, I mean, I'm, I was half joking, but I reckon they do. I reckon you know they, they, we'll save. We've saved a good name for this one. Uh, but uh, yeah, son of Galileo and the uh, the dam. Uh, pretty much every horse that uh, Aidan O'Brien has uh, from this family has uh, has recorded black type as a two or three year old. So United Nations could be a, a good one. Uh, what price uh, Green Team? Just at a big price, um, David. Green Team is a forty to one and has been nibbled at slightly from fifty to one. Yeah, I was Do you think Kevin Ryan's mob take as much time over their naming? Green teams. Doesn't, <laughs> yeah. Not that good as United Nations, is it? <laughs> I mean, personally, it's a dirty old town, I think. I mean, you'd be saving that one for the, uh, Correct. <laughs> for the best horse, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, but uh, they, must have, uh, they must have been to Leeds. Uh, Caribus then, 8-11 to favourites uh, for the, uh, the autumn stakes. Graham, how are we playing it? Um, 
Yeah, well, Imperial Fighter, wasn't it? I forgot which one I was going to tip then. Imperial Fighter for me. That's all right. The two-year-olds, they all mix together. It's fine. I get it. I get it. Tom, uh, what about you? I think Caribus will win and Dubai Poet will give him most to do. Okay. Uh, I, I think Caribus will win. Imperial Fighter will run a big race and I'll keep an eye on Green Team. Not really a betting race. I don't really want to take the favourite on. David? Uh, Dubai poet each way. Just to correct an earlier mistake before one of the uh, one of the viewers does. Alatavi, of course, is trained by the Gosdens, not the Chrisfords. Another father and son team. We go. all knew that, but we were too kind to tell you, Dave. So <laughs> yeah. on with them, I mean, if well, we all, I know that's not true. If we all start pointing out each other's uh, mistakes, we'll never get the, uh, the, the the show done, will we? Um, uh, yeah, the autumn stakes and Caribus eight to eleven there uh, for uh, for the the two twenty. Back to York we go for the the two thirty seven. If you miss the two o two, this one will be coming along very shortly. Uh, it's the Play Coral Racing Super Series for free handicap, a, uh, a ten furlong handicap here at where Bay Bridge is uh, returning to the track at nine to four. Faisal is seven to two. Sinjari thirteen to two. Dark Jedi nines. Cockalorum eleven to one. Platinum Card twelves. Good Birthday fourteens with Alias and bigger prices the rest. And Tom, the return of Bay Bridge, uh, who uh, uh, won the London Gold Cup in fantastic style. I thought when he won at Newcastle, this is the archetypal group horse in a handicap going into uh, that Newbury run. And he looked it, um, but he's had an injury. Uh, of course, he was, uh, I think he was anti-post favourite for the Hardwick Stakes at Royal Ascot, but hasn't been seen since that, uh, that Newbury victory. But uh, he, uh, he's taken a lot out of the market here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's by my favourite star at the moment, New Bay. We'll be talking about him in a minute yeah. for, with Rodders, with uh, Bayside Boy, or whatever it's called in the Dewhurst. He's had his first Group 1 winner on Saturday from his first crop, Saffron Beach. So I'm a big fan of Baybridge. He's got a big question mark to answer, though, hasn't he, now? He's up, I mean, this is, he's up in the weights, probably in a better race. The, the London Gold Cup hasn't actually worked out very well, has it? My Frankel, or whatever his name, King Frankel, can't get out of his own way since. Uh and he's had his injury. So do I want to back him at 9 to Certainly I don't, especially not on the ground up at York, which was uh, really desperate. The interesting thing is that he is running at York because he was entered in the uh, final race at Newmarket mm. tomorrow. And they've obviously made the decision to go for the softer ground. So I presume they think that Baybridge will like the conditions up there. Uh, that was a worry for me. Uh, 9 to 4 is plenty short enough. Uh, I think Faisal's going to enjoy conditions and he's going to enjoy the way the, con the track is riding. I think he's quite a sort of slow one paced horse but he'll he'll uh he'll keep grinding on and i think he'll be suited by your his form last time has obviously worked out well with the winner going on to run second in the cambridgeshire afterwards so i can see why people fancy him i'm worried about the ground for sinjar he's got great york form hasn't he, he won the uh john smith's cup by miles two years ago and then came back here after a break and probably should have won a big handicap at the Ebor meeting when he was just second to migration but the grounds, the grounds are worry for him. I, I was going to give a chance, just a little each way chance. I actually think Faisal might well win, but I actually uh, was going to give a chance to Elias, the other three-year-old for Rafe Beckett. I just think he'll like conditions. Uh, he won a good race up in Hamilton, the Glasgow Stakes. I was impressed with him that day. Uh, he's been disappointing since, but I think returning to soft ground and maybe sort of getting on with it might help him. So I actually think Faisal might be, might, might win, but I would uh, give. Alias an each way shot at the prices. Okay, Alias uh, fourteen to one then for Rafe Beckett, who had a, a winner at the track this afternoon. So uh, potentially each way play against Bay Bridge. Uh, uh, we've got two unexposed types at the top of the betting. Graham, are you uh, are you with them or are you finding something else? Uh, yeah, I'm with one of them. It's, it's nice to be um, 35 minutes in the show and finally get a race that isn't a juvenile race. <laughs> uh, don't I, worry, we'll be, back, we'll be back to the two-year-olds before you know it. I know, but I, I thought Baybridge was was a weak favourite, beat ball favourite here for a few reasons in that I think they went off a bonkers pace in that race at Newbury, the yeah. London Gold Cup. Yeah, I thought he was given the best ride in the race. Yes, he won it well, but he certainly was given the best ride in the race and had his energies conserved early on. Um He's obviously been off for 147 days, which is a concern. And that race, as Tom said, it is not as strong as it can be traditionally. It is often one of the strongest three-year-old races in the whole calendar. But this season, I think the second, third, fourth, fifth have all gone winless since. I think the sixth won next time, but he was one of the ones who set the bonkers pace, so probably didn't show his best form. I thought Faisal would win. Mm. Uh, that run last time out behind Ammat, he was trying to give Ammat ten pound. He was going off six to four favourite to give Ammat ten pound. It was an almost impossible task, wasn't it? Because Ammat was a huge gamble and almost won the Cambridgeshire next time. Ammat's rated nine pound higher now, and Faisal's running off only one pound higher. I think he's the better of the day, Faisal. 
Okay, there you go. You, 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 that was a real, a real casually throwing, throwing that in at the end there. Um, th yeah, okay, fair enough. I wasn't expecting you to be that, that confident in the end. But... Why, do I not usually sound confident? <laughs> no, no, it's just what it is. <laughs> I think it's off the back of... I think you sound very confident in the two-year-old. I, I think it's off the back of the three two-year-old races. You lulled me into a false sense of security there, so I understand that. Okay, Faisal, best bet of the day for, for, uh, for the Gosden team with Holly Doyle in the saddle. Uh, yeah, the, the son of Golden Horn is a seven to two shot, uh, and uh, we uh, have a again a fairly top heavy market here. Is the money coming for the uh, the unexposed type, David, uh, or are people playing things each way? Uh, Baitbridge is fairly solid, five to two into nine to four. Uh, Alais that uh, Tom has actually given a mention to has gone the other way, fourteen to one from ten to one during the day today. But I want to know if Rodders is going to be quite as confident after I tip Faisal as well. Um, I give him way to weigh in off 100 day absence last time. You say you forgive him that second place last time. No problem. So we'll go back in again on this one tomorrow. Uh, Dark Jedi, he's been busy. You could make excuses. He met a little bit of trouble last time in running. Uh, Sinjari, I don't think there are any excuses for his defeat at Doncaster last time. And again, as all the, the, the boys have said, Bay Bridge is one to be avoided at the prices. So yeah, Faisal for me, Rodders, is it still your bet of the day? Uh, my confidence is slightly diminished, but I think I'll stick with slightly. it. I don't think you're as uh, you're you're not as tainted as Tom and Paul by the the David Stevens <laughs> effect, are you though? No, but there's time, isn't there? <laughs> there, is, there is time. There is indeed. Uh, quick, before we move on, uh, Pythagoras, Tom. <laughs> oh, not another one. This is another Keeley special. <laughs> it, it is. It is. Pythagoras. Yeah. Running yeah. for us. He doesn't stay the trip, does he? Doesn't no. get a mile and a quarter. He probably doesn't. But the uh, the sixth, uh, you know, his best run was that sixth in the Dante. Doesn't look too that bad now, seven. does it? How many, yeah, he beat one, didn't he? He what, sorry? <laughs> he was only, there was only seven in it, wasn't there? I no, mean, there I, was ten. I could have finished sixth in the Dante. No, he, with Kobe. No, he was well, there was, there was ten and he was he was well was clear of it? Uncle Bryn, who went at Ascot off a mark of 99. So, uh, 96 is not too bad. I was, just, I was just trying to tempt you in there, but uh, but obviously yeah. not. Um, <laughs> Faisal, the, the best bet of the day for you then, Graham? Faisal for me, yeah. Okay, very well. David agreeing. And Tom? Yeah, I think Faisal's probably going to win, but I'm, but I'm going to have a few quid on Elias as well each way. Okay, very well. And uh, I thought I do think Bay Bridge is a group horse in a handicap, like Illarab was last year. Uh, but uh, surely Sir Michael Stout wouldn't be uh, bringing him back if he wasn't ready to roll after that injury. So uh, uh, we might see a nice type win the 2.37 at York. We're definitely going to see a nice type win the 2.55 at Newmarket, that's for sure. This year's Dewhurst uh, has uh, eight runners and a potential superstar at the top of the betting, but it's not going to be a cakewalk for him, that's for sure. As we've got plenty of improving uh, Colts in up against him. Native Trail is in at 8 to 11. Bayside Boy 5 to 1. Straight Answer 11 to 2. Then a jump out to Dubawi Legend and uh, Gloomthorne at uh, 11 to 1. 18 to 1 Debab. 22 to 1 Berkshire Shadow. 25 to 1 The Outsider. Go Bears Go. And we've got to a, uh, a Dewhurst here. And the, uh, the Outsider of the entire field is a Group 2 winner with Group 1 form, Tom. So uh, that tells us it must be a strong renewal. Yeah, good race, isn't it? Good race. Uh, really looking forward to it. Massive fan of Native Trail, massive fan of Bayside Boy, a massive fan of a few others. I don't know much about Straight Answer. I mean, Native Trail's obviously the uh, starting point, isn't he? Uh, with his unbeaten record and his fantastic win in the national stakes last time. Just a little bit worried that we might have overrated that performance a little bit. Point Lonsdale's probably a mile and a half horse. He's a brother to Broom after all. Ebro River was third. Got lapped, didn't he, at, at uh, Longchamp afterwards. Uh, just a little bit concerned that this is a better... He's up against faster horses than he was racing that, that day. I know Ebro Rivers won a group two, but I think these are some good horses here he's up against. I actually think what was the outsider of the whole field at the start of the day, Darbab, has a very decent chance of hitting the frame here. Uh, if you go back, he won, he won his debut at Leicester and was really impressive. Went to the Coventry. I think he was favourite or very close to being favourite. And he got knocked over twice and flew home and was only beaten a couple of lengths. Then the key, the key form is the superlative stakes at Newmarket. He was, he was favourite, nine to four favourite, nine to five favourite. Some weird price he was to beat uh, Native Trail. And for 95% of the race, he looked like he was going to do it easily. He was racing on the far side, which might have been unfavoured. And he went clear of his rivals. And I think if Frankie had his time again, he would have waited two furlongs because he went two furlongs too soon. And then he got worn down by some stronger stayers close home. But I think I think seven furlongs is his trip now. I wouldn't worry about his defeats in the Mill Reef last time. I thought he got stopped in his run. I think the ground was probably a little bit 
not not how he liked it. And it was his warm up. He'd had 75 days off or 70 days off, and he was coming back to get ready for the Dewhurst. He was Frankie Dottori, John Gosden's. We saw what they did with Inspiral today. It was 33 to 1 this afternoon. I see it's 18 to 1 now. Still think that's too big. I think he'll hit the frame, and I think he's got a good shot of beating Native Trail as well. So I'm quite sweet on Darbab to run a big race here. Okay, Darbab then is uh, is an 18 to 1 shot then for the, uh, the Gosden team. And yeah, again, uh, just showing uh, how strong this, uh, this race is, uh, given that he was uh, uh, red hot. Uh, favourite for uh, for a couple of uh, races this season. Uh, the commentary being one of them we've already mentioned. Um, talk to us about Native Trail again. We're back to we're back to the two year olds for you, Graham. This is what you were asking for, um, but Absolutely. it's it's hard not to have um, uh, to have to have missed Native Trail. He's a he's a huge horse. He's he's got a slightly un, kind of ungainly action as well, hasn't he? You get the feeling that it's his raw ability at the moment that's uh, that's getting him through, and he will be better next year. It probably will be, yeah. Uh, when you get big horses like this, I think sometimes that people do go a bit overboard on them as well. Oh, look at how he looks like a monster, and then that gets affected at the price as well. But, yeah, I mean, it was a tough one for me because I, I was fairly certain that, that Point Lonsdale was good, Reach for the Moon was good, I thought they were a good double that weekend. And then they both got beat, of course. Reach for the Moon got beat, Point Lonsdale got beat, Native Trail fresh, Point Lonsdale. I was impressed with Bayside Boy the way that he beat um, Reach for the Moon as well. So I mean, he's another he's 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 another one who, who hasn't quite until that win didn't quite give the impression he'd he put it all together yet. No, and uh, yeah, I, I, he was beaten by Masakela, wasn't he at um, Newbury? He was like in front just before the line, and yeah, got collared on the line. And Masakela's obviously got form with Native Trail. They're very closely matched. I think Native Trail beat Masakela ahead in the race that Debab was in. Was it? I um, can't remember. Yeah. So, you know, it was that that looks a, a decent line of form, that new market form. I, I just looked at the market and I think Native Trail is the most likely winner, but I just don't think there's that much between Native Trail, Bayside Boy. And to be fair, like I backed a bab last time out yeah. <laughs> following that form and was a bit disappointed with him probably being put off by that run. Uh, so I'll probably be kicking myself if I don't back the bab as well. But um, I thought Bayside Boy was, some, was the, the value in the race. Native Trail is still the most likely winner for me, but. Um, I don't think there's much between Bayside Boy and Native Trail. Not certainly. There's ten pound on RPRs. There's like I think Native Trail's odds on Bayside Boy is like seven eight to one. Mm. I just don't see that big gap between them, and I'd rather back the bigger price. Again, I'm saying it when you say you don't like the juvenile contest, but so far um, you've looked at them so far. Um, these sort of second, third favourites, four five six to one. It's almost such looking a. Oh, if all them hit the frame, Graham, you you know. Well, yeah. What do we make of straight answer? Does it, can Joe Lyons actually train winners in England or not? <sighs> yeah, he's, he's, he's... He brings over these three, these two-year-olds with a bunch of ones by their name. They all get beat. Is this going to be his one? 11 runs in the UK, last five seasons uh, for, for juveniles, one place. And obviously, Dr. Zemp was a, a big disappointment. Um, and you know, you've had a similar similar times like that, haven't you? I mean, was the hot favourite in the Cheveley Park, was it? was very disappointing recently as well. Yeah, of course. She looked uh, very good. Bridge. Yeah, Sacred yeah, Bridge. yeah. Um, yeah, the question is, what have they been beating over in uh, over in Ireland? I mean, I think the most interesting Irish winner as well is is the the Bally Doyle rep, who in Tenebris and won that that Shively Park, won once in the spring, uh, hasn't been seen since. Absolutely bolted up at Newmarket, and we have a, a colt here with a very similar profile who who beat Castle Star last time out. Who uh, who Tom is a genuine a genuine Group One horse. So sure, I mean any any other year, Glutenthan would be uh, would be a lot shorter, wouldn't he? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the only thing is, like, like the Philly, he's been he's been off for a bit, hasn't he? He's been off for fifty two days. Uh, I think this is a much stronger race than that race tenorism or whatever she's called one uh, the other day. I think this is the proper championship two year old race. I'd be surprised if he could win this off the back of that. I really would. He'd have to be a superstar. Uh, I think the other one we haven't mentioned is Dubawi Legend. He ran. He was favourite to win that York race, wasn't he? Royal Patronage. Uh, Imperial fighter, you know, the Kingman horse of Charlie Appleby's that went really well. You know, that, that Acom's worked out really well. Uh, I think he's a lot better than he showed that day. I think horses can run badly at, at, at uh, uh, York for no apparent reason. So I think there's loads in there. Berkshire's shadow. We haven't even mentioned him and he won the, his form looks better, doesn't he? He was second to Angel Blur at, at Goodwood and he won the Coventry. So there's, I, think there's, I think there's plenty in there to give uh, Native Trailer a race for sure. If he beats this lot like he did the other day, then he is a proper he's a proper superstar. Yeah, he is. I mean, he, I mean, he's already run to a, an RPR of one, you know, one hundred and twenty-two, which would which would win this race pretty much any year, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, one twenty-one is the uh, par for three-year-old group ones. Yeah. So, 
Uh, he's already good enough to win a three-year-old Group 1, according yeah. to our RPRs. We'll see if that's right. Yeah, we will indeed, yeah, because, um, you know, Pinatubo and various horses uh, mm. have you know, looked like, not that he had a poor three-year-old season, but you expect, a lot of people expect him to just destroy everything in his yeah, sight. And he didn't. No, he didn't quite. Uh, Native Trail, an 8-11 to 11 here, Bayside Boy 5-1 to one straight, answer at 11-2 and, and then 11-1 to one bar. Uh, again, uh, as, a, as, a, as a bookie, David, um, what are, how are people going to play these? Uh, are we going to have a lot of... Uh, Godolphin Trebles, what are you more scared of? All the odds on favourites winning or all the bad each way sneaking into the frame and, and maybe upsetting <laughs> the apple cart? No, I think tomorrow the Godolphin two odds, particularly Caribas and this one, Nate Trail, are going to be very popular in, in doubles. Everyone's got the favourite in the, in the Zetland as well, of course. Uh, he's, he's very warm and he's 8 to 11, so he's a, he's a solid favourite. Charlie Appleby was saying earlier this horse, he weighs as much now as a Dayard does. Now, I don't know what that means in, in racing terms. Of, I mean, he's a big horse. Um, he, will he cope with the dip okay? We'll find out, I suppose. He's plenty short enough, given the, the quality of the opposition against him. I like Dubawi Legend. As Tom said, always forgive a horse. One bad run at York or a run at York. And he was very fancy for that Acom. That didn't work out for him that day, but 11 to 1 each way. But if you do fancy the favourite, and Frankel won this race, of course, by two and a quarter lengths. If Native Trout can do likewise and win this race by more than two lengths, we were five to two. We're now three to one. So for those native trail backers, and it doesn't sound like there are too many on this panel, but there are those that fancy native trail to end a perfect season. And he'll head into winter quarters like a Frankel, like a Pinatubo, like a two darn hot as an unbeaten Dewhurst winner. And we'll have to see next year, of course, if he goes on to emulate a Frankel or if he's more of a Pinatubo. Absolutely. If you're trailing eight to 11, but three to one to win by more than two lengths. Pinatubo won it by exactly two lengths. Uh, so uh, hopefully he can just uh, edge slightly uh, further into the lead if that's uh, that's what the case. You saying, Ross, you're saying that's a moderate uh, <laughs> price boost. I, th I think that's I don't think that's too bad given what everyone has gone and gone mad for on Native Trail. But given his given the uh, the odds on uh, price about him, given how far he beat Point Lonsdale last time out, I mean you you're not asking him to do anything that he's not already done. He's won two of his three races by further I than that distance. Moderate. I think it's moderate. I think you need four or five to one for that. I think this is a tough race. It's another one of those Coral Boys special nightmare <laughs> prize boosts, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just setting you up for that. I, could, I couldn't. Uh, we can't. We can't all gang up, can we? But uh, Native Trail eight to eleven, uh, three to one, but win by more than two lengths. Uh, does he win by more than two lengths, or are you backing something else? Uh, if he wins, he might, but I wouldn't back it. I would back Bayside Boy instead. Bayside Boy, it is then. Tom, I've backed Darbab. Don Bab, it is then uh, at, uh, at 18 to 1 currently. Uh, David? I'm glad Tom's missed the price on Darbab. Anyway, was a lot bigger earlier on. Uh, I'd be do Dubawi legend each way. Yeah, Tom, he misses a lot of the prices about horses he fancies, doesn't he? Uh, doesn't he, Tom? Uh, but uh, Native Trail, uh, 8 to 11 uh, favourites. Uh, uh, people watching at, uh, at home, uh, Tom Williams says, good point, Rodder's sacred bridge, never look closer within the Shrevely Park. And Alex Mansfield says that the Dewhurst just comes down to Native Trail handling the dip. He's a very big juvenile, looks likely to be another big Charlie Appleby day. And uh, Alan Williams thinks Bayside Boy will worry the favourites out of it. Uh, so uh, there's a few uh, selections for the Dewhurst then uh, tomorrow. Uh, group 1 action for the Juveniles. Uh, from uh, uh, little form to plenty of form. We've got a, a big sprint handicap here at the, uh, the Coral Sprint Trophy coming up over at uh, York. Uh, and uh, laugh a minute is 6-1 to one market leader here. Gulliver 8-1, to one, Magical Spirit 11s, Comanche Falls 11s, Popmaster 12s, Mr Waggy 12s, Nomadic Empire 12s, Mondemesh. Here he is, 14-1. to one. <laughs> Bigger price as the, uh, the rest. I mean, there's talk of Willie Mullins winning the Cesano, which plenty of times, Godolphin winning the Zetlin Stakes, uh, at Bally Doyle in the, the Dewhurst. Uh, but Gulliver, uh, his entire season pre pretty much revolves around this race. This is, <laughs> he's won the last two. Um, I'd say it's hard, almost harder to win three York Sprint handicaps on the bounce than it is to win a couple of Dewhursts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for an individual horse it is, because you can only run in one, obviously. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> this is a, a tough, Sprint, is it? Uh, no surprise that uh, Coral sponsor it, of course. And um, I think we should talk about Mondamage, don't you? <laughs> I, think, I think Tom will throw himself out of his window if we do, <laughs> do too long. Uh, such a frustrating horse, isn't he? Last, did he, win, he won last time, didn't he? he did. And he won at Haydock. And then when I thought that he'd finally got his act together at Donny, I thought, oh, yeah, he'll win at Donny. And then he ran in a stinker. And then he did finally prove that he can win two races, obviously not right next to each other. Well, he's won, he's basically, this, this season he's won three, he's unbeaten over five furlongs on fast ground, mm. which is 
not what he gets on Saturday. No, it's not. And probably this trek, maybe, you know, I know he's run all right here, but they go fast and he'd probably be out of his ground again. I, I had Copper Knight to beat him last time at, um, at Haydock, which is typical. You know, you're like, oh, I'll, I'll leave Mondo Medge alone this time. I'm back Copper Knight. And Copper Knight was a winner at everywhere but the line that day yeah. um, at Haydock. And I just think that he likes York, doesn't he, Copper Knight? Uh, I think that he'll be bang there and, and, and would be my idea of the winner. But it's, it's, it's another impossible race, isn't it? I know Tom Siegel loves these races. He does. Yeah. He absolutely loves the York Sprint Handicap. Um, I mean, we're looking for York form. We've got plenty of it. Like I said, Gulliver's a dual winner of this race. Magical Spirit ran in that race last year. Uh, Mr. Waggy's won a couple of times here. Nomadic Empire a couple of times here. Um, all the horses, like I said, Copper Knight, which we've, uh, which we've just mentioned. Monda Medge, of course. We should give him another mention. Good old Monda Medge, yeah. Boardman, uh, Volatile Analyst, Mr. Lupton. Loads of York form here, Tom. Have we mentioned Monda Medge yet? <laughs> I don't think I'm we still... have, mate. I don't think we have. <laughs> I like one at a big price in this, Ross. Volatile analyst. Mm. Uh, uh, Keith Dalgleish uh, took Soldiers Minute out, ran it the other night in the in the thing. Soldiers Minute was second in the in the uh, Air Silver Cup the other day. I just think Keith Dalgleish's horse is running well. He's run once at York on soft ground over seven furlongs, and he won easily, beating a good horse, Tom Frey, who's uh, done well in sort of similar races. He's down in the weights. He's got a hood on for the first time. He dropped back to six furlongs in the uh, Air Gold Cup last time, and he made the running. I mean, he's that fast. I mean, he properly made the running. He made the running in the uh, race that Highfield Princess ran, won at Royal Ascot. He was upsized Highfield Princess. That's really good form. He's a really fast horse. He's got soft ground form at York. I'm hoping the hood that he wears for the first time. I'm not a great fan of hoods because I think they dull the senses a bit, a bit like having COVID, I'm going to assure you. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, they uh, they put the hood on. He's got Wagyu, Mr. Wagyu drawn next door. He's got punch bowl fire in the, in the, in the, in, around him as well. So hopefully Callum Rodriguez will be able to settle him in for the first time because he's been doing too much too soon. And if he can repeat the form of his seven furlong win on soft ground here earlier in the season, I think he's got a chance at a big price. Now, as Rod has quite rightly pointed out, I am rubbish at sprint handicaps. But uh, I do think he's, he's, worth, he's worth a few quid. He was, once again, he was a 33 to one shot earlier in the day. I think 20 to one is a fair, it's still a fair price. I just think it's one of those races where you're looking for a horse that's going to finish, that's going to be finishing the race simply because that's the nature of the ground at the moment. And Volatile Analyst should do it, provided the hood does the trick. So he's the one for me, Volatile Analyst, and I've managed to get through that without even mentioning Mondamage. I mean, you mentioned him first and last, but apart oh, from that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Volatile Analyst, interesting. He reminds me a bit of a horse, uh, or similar profile to Cold Stare, who uh, won at air a couple of days ago, a seven furlong soft ground horse, uh, who dropped back to six, and he ha Cold Stare loved it the other day at air, and you get the feeling uh, I think Volatile, I agree. I think he'll, he'll do a similar thing, Tom. I think, it, again, if you handle York and you can get on the speed, that's half the battle, isn't it? That's what I hope. That's what I hope. I mean, as I say, I'm, I'm, York Sprints and me don't go hand in hand, but having watched about 45,000 of them, because there seems to be one every week, uh, it does seem that when you, get, when you get a horse that acts at York and can sort of get behind the pace there or on the pace there, they've got a, they've got a good chance. I mean, as we've seen from Copper Knight over the years, as, as Rod has pointed out, once you get a horse that rolls along out front there, it's hard to uh, hard to pull him back. I do think mm. Laugh a Minute, it's interesting. We've got to mention him. He was mm. a massive eye-catcher last time, wasn't he, in uh, one of those five furlong sprints in um, in Ireland. Uh, Aidan McGuinness won the Abbey the other day, very well handicapped on his form. He won the, one of those sales races for Roger Varian back in the youth. I think they're quite hard to win, they are. I mean, lots of good horses end up running in them, and he won it very easily. I do think he's, he's very dangerous, but... Mm. Will he like the conditions and will he get too far back? It's possible. Well, yeah, I mean, he ran in this race last year and he looked, uh, he was beaten out of sight behind Gulliver. So interesting, they've come back for another crack. But Laugh a Minute, six to one favourite. Uh, it is uh, then uh, Volatile Analyst for uh, for Tom. Uh, Graham is going with Copper Knight. Copper Knight. David, what did you make of this? Yeah, well, start of the week when we priced this up, we had ten, five 10 to one co favourites and Laugh a Minute wasn't one of them. And we see now Laugh a Minute is six to one favourite. So, He's been the market mover in the last 48 hours for sure, Fredo McGuinness. Uh, he didn't get a clear run last time. I think he was sort of probably pitched to win that race last time. And as you say, interesting, they're coming over here having another go at this. Uh, Gulliver, that our second favourite there, forms part of a, a strong uh, David O'Mara challenge along with Nomadic Empire. And David O'Mara is the subject of our next very moderate 
price boost. I'll get that in first before Tom does. You fancy Gulliver or Nomadic Empire? <laughs> David O'Mara to win this Coral Trophy uh, was four to one. Now eleven to two. Five places each way. This is all my way of saying I haven't got a clue. Very well. Uh, that's the uh, that's the bit to clip out uh, of the uh, the show for everyone. <laughs> but uh, um, I'll go for uh, I'll go for Mr. Wagyu as well. Going to put him uh, uh, in with a chance. He's a dual winner here, and he's on soft ground for the first time since winning at Goodwood. Although a mark of a hundred is a uh, a big ask. But again, York courses for York courses. Uh, that's the uh, the Coral Sprint Trophy. Then very different proposition uh, for the uh, the final race. We're going to preview uh, ahead of uh, Saturday's card, and that is of course uh, the Cesarowicz 2021. We've got 33 of them lining up. And 32 of them are trained by Willie Mullins. Uh, no, only the five uh, uh, he's, uh, he's sending for this. But he does have the favourite in the shape of MC Muldoon, who's a 9-2 to two shot. Uh, Buzz is 7-1, to one, Calling the Wind 8-1, to one, Burning Victory 9s, Live Your Dream 10-1, to one, Favoros 12s, Elysian Flame at 16s and 20-1, to one, Great White Shark, of course, uh, uh, is last year's winner of the race. And the fact that Great White Shark is last year's winner of the race and is a 20-1 to one, practically unconsidered shot again, uh, uh, Rodders tells us that this is a, a, a tricky little race. What did you make of the Zanowicz again? You, you're, not a, you're not a two-year-old fan. Surely there's plenty of form here. You're liking the, you, you like jumps. You like the jumps action as well. You've got jumps horses on the flat. <laughs> this is your kind of race. I can feel. This is my kind of race. I, I know a lot of these horses very well. Um, I thought that the best handicapped horse in the race was Calling the Wind, uh, who obviously uh, won at. Corius Goodwood over two and a half miles in that race where they go up and then back round the loop. And then he should have won last time out over a mile and a half. Uh, he was beaten by Matt Cram. He was given too much to do. He looked like he was going to come through and win. I think the jockey thought that they were going to get there and then the line came <laughs> and didn't get there. Uh, I think that this this looks an ideal race for him, really. He looks, uh, he's looks he got well drawn, isn't he? 27. Well, I don't know, I, what is a good draw in here? It's high, isn't it, apparently? For some I reason. low was it? Was it? it? I mean, is it one of those races that changes high. a bit? Yeah, maybe you're... Hmm. It used to be low. It was definitely low, because I remember Scatter Dice winning it. Well, so 18. now it's high, because the last few lines <laughs> have gone high. I, yeah, I don't pretty know. Much, yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, I think he's the most likely winner. We'll Tom, Tom will tell us the draw bias, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> However, the, the problem is, is Ross, is that, um, you know, I've, I've got a good handle on the English horses, mm -hmm. not such a good handle on the Irish horses. And what usually happens is I pick the best English horse and then Willie Mullins beats it with something. That is usually what happens. Um, that's happened to me three or four times in big staying handicaps in the past where I've been on the best English horse, but I've finished second or third or or even fourth behind three Willie Mullins horses. <laughs> and I kind of feel like it's a moral victory on my part because I'm yeah. like, well, I've got the right. And then it's just Willie Mullins, isn't it? You get done by him and... Um, yeah, MC Muldoon obviously should have won at Royal Ascot. Um, yeah, he, he ended up behind a wall horse. It was an amazing effort to go and win the race. Um, I thought Colin King's mount might run well at a bigger price for Willie Mullins. Micro manage. Yeah. Uh, won well at, at Galway last time. I'm going to back calling the wind and expect to be beaten by Willie Mullins. Okay. David, we want. Uh, do we have a without Willie Mullins market potentially in this race? <laughs> but Graham? We don't, sadly, but we do have a Willie Mullins to win it. Uh, enhanced price boost. Um, he's got six runners actually in this race, not five. So uh, he's seven to four to win it from eleven to ten. So have a little insurance on uh, on getting done by Willie Mullins, Graham. Okay, there you go. So uh, that's your that's your uh, your angle there, Graham. So just back your horse and then back. back yeah, the I think I think Snow a lot will run well as well. You know she's improving. Which one, sorry? Snow a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. James Ferguson's runner. She's yeah. improving nicely. Okay. What price Snow a lot, uh, David? 25 to 1, and we've got seven places each way in this Cesarowicz. Okay, uh, and like I said, most of them will be filled by Willie, uh, Willie Mullins. Uh, are, you, uh, are you with uh, the, uh, the Irish Raiders here, uh, Tom? Can they, the, how many times have they come over uh, for, uh, for handicaps, uh, jumps or flat, and, uh, uh, and they happen to be incredibly well handicapped? They haven't won one this year, though, have they? Uh, Stratton won the Queen Alexandra, but mm. Willie Mullins has had... Quite a few shots at a few of these this year, and he hasn't won one. Uh, he had a few beat at Royal Ascot, a few beaten in the Evil, a few other, a few, a few floating around. So, Mar MC Muldoon, I think, has got a very, very solid chance. I think he's improving. I thought his run over hurdles last time was his best ever. Clearly, he's got a chance. I did this race for an anti post thing a few months ago and ended up on Buzz and Calling the Wind at, at double figure prices. So, I'm quite happy with. I think actually Buzz is the best handicapped horse in the race myself because I think he went he improved 
I don't know, 30, 40 pounds over jumps last year, and he's back on a lower mark than he was when he used to run on the flat. Uh, Nicky Henderson's won the race a few times, so I'm quite, uh, I'm quite enthusiastic about Buzz and calling the wind. I do think Graham's right about snow a lot. He's wrong that he's calling her a she, but he's right that she's got, he's got a chance because <laughs> Hayley Turner rides her, and I think, I think snow a lot's definitely the one at, at a price that could run well. And I would also throw in a word for an old friend of mine the nine-year-old nicholas t at 66 to one when he won the uh the northumberland play everyone said it was a fluke this that and the other i've never seen he came from last to first and he sighed through the field like a really well handicapped he's only a couple of pounds higher here and two starts ago at haydock in the race is it the borough cup he was the only horse that day that came from miles off the pace that was uh Island Brave won under a brilliant Sylvester D'Souza ride, and Nicholas T would have got up in another couple of strides. He came from miles back. Jim Goldie has a good record in the he ran, What was that old grey horse he used to run in the Cambridge around the Cesarewitch and get placed in it? But whatever he did, he used to he used to he used to run that run that horse in this in in this race. He's got a good record in these races, and I could see Nicholas T running into the frame. I don't know how many places Mister moderate uh, price boosts he's got on the other end up there. But if he's got seven places, I would say uh, Highland T, Nicholas T might be one to sneak in at the back end of those placings. Okay, yeah, seven places then for the year. This is Zara, which, uh, and I'll throw I mean, another Mullins horse I thought might have a, a squeak, Whiskey Sour, who's a, uh, a group one, a grade one winning uh, a novice hurdle on soft ground. He's only been seen once in the past two years. Uh, but uh, that was in a, a good handicap at uh, Punchertown back in April. Thought he was a, a big prize, a sort of 25 to 1. So unsurprisingly wide open here for the, the Cesaro, which a, a big staying handicap. Not too many tips on the, the chat for, for this one. Uh, only Neil Francis really fancies one, and he's gone for withhold each way. Of course, he's a rock-solid yardstick on his day. Uh, so the Cesaro, which handicap then, two, uh, two miles and two furlongs. Uh, what gets beat by Mullins? Yeah, calling the wind for me. Calling the wind then for, uh, for Graham. Uh, Tom? Uh, Buzz, I think it's got a very good chance, and I will also have a few quid on Nicholas T at a massive price each way. Okay, and David? Uh, I'll have a couple of goes here. Livia Dream was second for Saeed Bintra in the Cesarex trial, beaten by a Charles Burns, um, I said plot horse that day, but he found he bumped into one too good that day. And because you've got to have a Willie Mullins runner on your side here, I'm going to plump for Burning Victory, his Dover winner, out of his half dozen. Oh, yeah, of course, Bernie Victory, uh, uh, the uh, uh, shock triumph winner a couple of seasons ago. Uh, MC will do their 92 favourite. I will go with Whiskey Sour, a little each way play at a very big price for the Cesaro, which uh, that just about brings our uh, TV previews to an end then ahead of Saturday's uh, action. Uh, good luck if you play in a mix of juvenile contests and very impossible, very impossible, you don't really needed the word very there, uh, handicaps for, for Saturday afternoon, but we still need to find best bets on Saturday. So let's get the naps starting off with Graham Rodway. Yeah, mine is Faisal in the 237 at York. The Play Coral Racing Hash Super Hash Series 4 Free Handicap. Okay, there Did go. you name that one, Dave? No, but do play the Coral Super Series. No, I've forgotten what it's called. Racing <laughs> Super Series for free. You can win 25 grand, free to enter. There you go. What's the nap tomorrow, David? Uh, I'm not going to go with Faisal for Graham's sake. I'm actually going to go a race. We haven't looked at the last race of the day at Newmarket, Mostadath. Okay, Mossa Daff it is then. Uh, very well, threw that one in uh, as a, a bit of a curveball. Uh, Tom, what's the nap? I didn't know we were allowed to do other races. That's cheating. <laughs> You're not. No, I'm not. Okay, I'll go. For, I'll take a chance on Darbab at uh, an each way price uh, against Native Trail in the Dewhurst. Okay, very well. And I will go with Unconquerable in the uh, the opening contest uh, tomorrow for uh, uh, Donica. O'Brien and Frankie de Torre. Uh, thank you to everyone who got in touch. Good luck with your naps and your bets tomorrow as well. Uh, as I said, it is a, a, a fantastic day of racing, whether you like the, uh, the younger horses or the exposed handicappers. Got plenty for everyone. Uh, and we'll be back uh, next week for, for more action, of course, at Champions Day to look forward to. Thank you to Graham. Thank you to Tom. Thank you to David. And thank you to everyone for watching at home. Enjoy the racing this weekend. Uh, please gamble responsibly. And join us uh, next week and like and subscribe to that stream.